know, the goal is simple in high school football. If you're in Nebraska, the goal is to end your season in Memorial Stadium. In Iowa, it's to make it to the Unidome and Cedar Falls. So let's go with our monster matchup. A big one tonight is Papillion La Vista South taking on Bellevue West. That's where we find KETV News Watch 7's Thor trip live in Bellevue. Happy New Year, Thor. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Lots of all-state performers to replace in this matchup. On one side with Papillion La Vista South, you have Tristan Fairchild, a four-year starter who went Division I. And on the other sideline, the home team, Bellevue West, well, their quarterback, the all-time leading passer in Nebraska State history. So some work to do. Let's check out the highlights here from tonight's action here at Bellevue West. And, well, the home of the... T-Birds right there in the house. Early on, it's finest Hampson with a one-yard touchdown run to make it 7-0. But then look at Jalen Bradley with a 93-yard touchdown return here to tie it at 7-7. He's not really that fast. We just, you know, fast-forwarded a little bit there for time's sake. He also rushes for 226 yards, 59 of them on this play right here. Fourth and one. Bradley takes it outside once again, and he is gone. The T-Birds lead it 21-7 at the half. Third quarter, though, Papillion La Vista South trying to come back. Aiden Turin with a 47-yard touchdown run cuts the deficit to 21-14. The Bellevue West answers with a 23-yard touchdown pass to Silvo Johnson. Unbelievable play. Evan Kieser there with the touch on that one. Bellevue West wins it. 35 to 14. Plenty of offense for Bellevue West, Andy. If you thought they were going to be missing it in this game, they outgained Papillion La Vista South 435 to 151. And it's not just the offense, the defense allowing just one true touchdown drive in the game. So lots to expect from this Bellevue West squad as we move forward and they try to get their first state title. All right, that's Thor Tripp reporting live from Bellevue West as Coach Huffman has things rolling with the T-Birds. All right, let's go to Class B now. Future Husker, uh, he's a junior. He starts his junior season. Cam Jurgens, the Orangeman of Beatrice, his club in the Metro tonight taking on the Ralston Rams. Cameron Jurgens, 6'3", 235-pound tight end and linebacker. Did a little bit of everything tonight, but Ralston actually strikes first. Watch this throw. Jake Knott, it bounces off Noah Hilton. And awesome hit magic right to Ty O'Brien. 23-yard gain sets up the first score. But you see why Nebraska is so excited about Jurgens. Huge target. His first touchdown grab of the season. Beatrice wins 47-21. Gross at second rank. Scott. Skyhawks flying high in there. Opener. Scott already up 7-0. And watch Kurt Randall. Tough from five yards out. He will break a couple tackles. Power his way into the end zone. 14 0 Scott midway through the first quarter. Then the Skyhawks air it out. Ryan Moritz lures in Ryan Trout. 40 yard score. Scott rolls 49 14. In Gretna, Dragons hosting Norris. Norris Austin Schultz ties the game at seven. You know, seven seven? That's our favorite score here at KETV News Watch 7. Just before half, though, Gretna's Chase Templeton. Great play. He keeps the ball alive in his hands on the bad snap and then throws it 37 yards of the touchdown to Grant Brunner, or Bruner, I should say. Gretna wins this one 21-18. In Iowa, Harlan taking on Lewis Central, renewing their rivalry. Second quarter, it's the Titans tailback Logan Redeker. The seniors 33-yard touchdown run. Titans up 24. For five minutes left in the half, quarterback Max Dugan shows off some fancy footwork. The sophomore's 35-yard run. Lewis Central wins 45-13. Glenwood and Abe Lincoln over in Council Bluffs. The Lynx try to defend their Newly renovated stadium, a beautiful facility over there in Council Bluffs. Four minutes left in the half. The Rams drive cut short. Senior defensive back Frank Jerkovich nabs the end zone interception. Glenwood's lead stays at 13 zip. Rams defense answers. This time it's Nate Nebel making the snap. Glenwood shut out. Winners 41 0. Great matchup at St. Albert. Falcons hosting Loma. Logan Magnolia, though it's the home team taking the lead early. Midway through the first quarter, Luke Waters, the connection with Tyler Blaha, the diving score, 7-0 Falcons. St. Albert headed to the second quarter, hot, and another Waters to Blaha connection sets up the team for a first and goal, and the tailback Luke Gronstel barrels in for the score. Eagles soar, 23-6, your final. A new era in Missouri Valley, opening up a new football stadium, the Missouri Valley Sports Complex, absolutely beautiful facility in Missouri Valley as the Big Reds hosting Griswold. Seven 7-0 Missouri Valley in the second quarter. Dalton Anderson calls his own number. He says, I'm going to give the ball to number 12. 
And look at him go, 30 yards inside the 15, and that sets up this terrific run. You want to watch a run here? Watch Nathan Haynes. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, bounces off a couple of tacklers, and in for the score, Missouri Valley wins 28 0. They've never lost in that stadium, ever. In Class C1, Bishop Newman knocks off number one Norfolk Catholic 14 7. That's your final. Wahoo dominating in their win over Ashland Greenwood. Opening night for Husker Volleyball at the Burke Challenge out in Oregon. They dropped the first set, the 10th ranked Florida, but come back to win the next three. Brianna Holman in their first match. Katie Rolson with 16 kills. Michaela Fecky with 15. They pick up where they left off. Uh, Huskers win in four. They'll face number two Texas tomorrow. Also, UNO loses to North Dakota tonight. And in soccer, Creighton, a winner at 25th ranked Rutgers. That's the seventh straight opening day win for the Jays. And Omaha, a winner against San Francisco. Women's soccer, Oregon blanks. Nebraska won nothing. Omaha losing to Creighton that match in the second half. What would you guys think? First day of Operation Prep Football. Ooh, Brad is Creighton Prep Brad. Well, I know we're going to hear mean, a lot about the Junior Jays every time forth, they win. Back and forth, mm -hmm. six years in a row. Mm -hmm. When I was playing my senior, I think I think we won, we back won in that the day. year. But yeah. yeah. All right, we'll yeah. see what they but can do great, this year. Great to a see football A lot of great back. performances up in the Absolutely. air right now. I, I tell you, uh, Omaha Burke with a convincing yes. win tonight. They're going to be some, some team to, to reckon with before the season's over with. And the weather held out. Yeah. Rain stayed away for the most part from Omaha. Temperature's a little cool. It still felt like football weather. Here. It was nice we're still, yeah, we're really still was. in August, but tonight still a few more showers lingering into Saturday morning, but we'll see a little more sunshine by the afternoon. Temperatures rebounding back in the 80s heading into the week. So looked out with the rain this week. We'll see what happens and as we go the, through the season. The last Friday night of the fall without a Husker football game the next day because a week from tomorrow the Huskers open up against Fresno State. That game's a 7 o'clock start at Memorial It'll State. It'll always be hot during Husker season yeah, well, too. It's just wait. <laughs> it's 90 degrees yeah. next week. That's our report at 10. First news Saturday starts at 5 a.m. with those overnight updates. Kimmel's up next.